Hi, welcome to the overview of the protective order registry. Today we're going to cover how to add, edit, and view various protective orders. This is the main page, the home page here. You may already have citation by publications on your site as well as protective order now. We're going to go ahead and click, click on protective order. You'll see here, this is the protective order page where you can add protective orders and the grid for any current ones you may already have entered. Before we get started though, I want to point out here in the upper right hand corner here, there's a little icon with manage users. You'll wanna just go ahead and double check your information. So you'll type in your name here in the filter, the search filter, and your name should pull up in the grid here as you start typing. Click on edit and just make sure your name information appears correct and that you have the count, the course that you have authority over, as well as um, view protective orders and or manage protective orders is marked here. In my case, everything's marked that I need. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel. If for some reason there's something missing on here that you cannot click, just make sure to reach out to the clerk or if necessary OCA to get that worked out. I'm going to go ahead and cancel since I'm already set up. So back to this uh, protective order screen here, manage court users. Actually, we're going to get out of here and go back to the protective order screen. Again, this is where you're going to see your grid of current orders. You can search here for any specific one you're looking for. Um, when you first get going on this, you may not have any, so we're going to start by adding a protective order. You want to start with adding the cause number, and I'm just going to make up information here for the sake of this. This is asking if there's a magistrate's order for emergency protection upon arrest, the CCP 17292. If not, you'll click no, and that'll take you to a different screen. In this case, we are going to enter a MOAB. So we'll go ahead and click yes and continue. And it enters your cause number, so you cannot change it here. If you need to change it, if you entered in the wrong thing, just go ahead and delete out of here and start a new one. Entering the most predominant or most serious offense is next. We have um, a, a list here of the various types. We're going to select family violence for the sake of training. And we're going to enter in the respondent details here. We're going to do John Doe. Date of birth, put in the date of birth here. And if there's a state identification number, go ahead and enter that in as well. Race, we have a selection of race, Asian, Indian, Black, white, or unknown. We realize that you may not have all the details at this point, so unknown is an option. Same with ethnicity, Hispanic, non-Hispanic, or unknown. We're going to put in unknown for these two. And then you're going to enter the county of residence. And if there's an alias, you'll want to go ahead and put that in here if the respondent goes by any alias names. We're going to say JD. And the next section is the protected person. You'll go ahead and add that person. We're going to add Jeannie Doe. Give her a date of birth of, uh, let's say, 11-11-1999. And we'll give her an alias as well. The next section, is there a, a request or application filed for this MOAP? If no, you'll simply check no. If yes, you'll see the screen change a little bit. It's asking for the application, the request application date. We're gonna say this happened on the 17th. And you'll wanna add a, a, a PDF file here. This is required when you do select yes. So we're gonna say, my file is added and now at this point if you need to just save and come back to it later you can certainly do that for the sake of training we're going to pretend we have everything we need and go ahead and enter the magistrate's order immediately 
again, it pulls up a it drops down here. It's either issued or denied. If it's denied, you just put in the deny date. And if you have an order, go ahead and put that in. We're going to say it was issued. In this case, you want to start over here. The issue, if you go right to this um, field next to the issued, it's asking for the date it was issued, signed by the judge. And we're going to say it was on the 21st. You'll notice here you can add 31 to 91 days. There's a, a toggle here to go up or down. Watch here, it will filter the date for you. So if you put in 31 days, or you can manually type in the days you want as well. And when you hit enter, this date will change to calculate that for you. And then the last here is the order serve date. And then again, it's required for a PDF form for your final protective order here on your magistrate's order. Once you have all that in, you go ahead and save. If you did miss a date, it, the screen when you go to save, it will prompt you that you're missing the date or a document, whatever is missing. We're going to go ahead and save. At least one person is required. Oh, I did not save this here. So I entered her information in, but I did not save. So click save and you'll see it down here now. And you can also edit it if you forgot to put in an alias or put in the date of birth wrong. And now if we go ahead and type in John, we can see that it pulls John's information up right here to, to edit or view, or you could delete as well. We could go in here and delete information. I'm still in the test environment here, so things are running a little bit slower right now. So down at the bottom, if you did want to delete this whole record, I'm not going to, but I'm going to show you what happens. If you hit delete, you will be prompted to confirm that that's really what you want to do. In this case, we're going to go ahead and cancel, and I'm going to exit out of here. Next, we're going to go ahead and add another protective order. This one time it's going to be a non magistrate's order of emergency protection. So we'll go ahead and type in the case. And we'll select no. Here it's asking for the court of issuance. We're going to say it happened in Austin County Court. And again, these two fields you cannot change. If you made a mistake, just go ahead and delete this and start back over. But your cause number and your court of issuance will remain in there. Say family violence. And since we just entered a MOAP, we are going to inform we are going to add that information in here. So um, I think that was MOEP. 233 and then the county Austin. And again, we're going to fill out the details for the respondent, John Doe. And the state identification number we used for him, 123. Same selection here. Um, again, we're going to add unknown, but if you know the, the race at that point, go ahead and add that. Unknown for ethnicity as well. County of residence is Austin and the alias. Again, a protected person, same thing. An alias. This next three sections will be the application detail, the temporary ex parte, and final order. 
So if you have, if you do not have an application, just a simple no, click is here. Otherwise, you'll click yes and be prompted for the application date. I'm going to say the 24th. And since you selected that, it is required to add a document here, the application order. And that has been added. And at this point, or any point here after, once you get the temporary ex parte, you can save what you have and come back into this to do an edit. We'll go ahead and add the temporary ex parte now. Okay, this happened on the 26th, the order serve date. And then again, you can select the predefined date here for 20 days and it'll calculate it here in this field. Right there, it's done. Otherwise, if it's more, you can just increase that to whatever, and it'll uncheck that. But if you recheck it again, it'll correct it. And then add your PDF file, or the ex parte. And we're gonna go ahead and save this at this point, and we'll come back in to edit it to add the final order. Again, if I missed anything, I forgot to save that again, but it'll prompt you like it did last time to come up and correct what you're missing. OK, so it should be saved now. We'll go ahead and search for John. And here are John's two protective orders. And the one we want to edit is the non-magistration. We'll just click on edit, delete. So you don't have to worry about it deleting when you click on this, it's just pulling up the form. And so we have all the information already in here. You will not have to change any of this unless you need to. You can certainly edit any of the fields other than these top two. You can come in and edit these. If you do want to edit any of the details for the objective order, you will just simply select the reason here for correcting data entry or to remove an application entered in error. You click that and it will prompt you. We're not going to remove it at this time, but it would remove it and then you would be prompted to add a new one. And we already have the temporary ex parte in there. Again, these fields are grayed out. You cannot change it until you select something here. So modification extension of tem temporary ex parte, a document will be required. You can correct data errors or remove the temporary ex parte. If we correct data error, you'll see the fields open. You can enter in your changes, but we don't need to do that. So now we're going to add the final protective order. Again, it's very similar to what we just did up above. If it's denied, I'll just ask for your date, and if you have it, order, you can go ahead and add that. It's not, there's no red asterisk next to this, so it's not a required document field. However, on issued it is. So we're going to go ahead and add the issue date, which is the date signed by the judge here in the parentheses. And you can select one year, it'll change it, two years or a lifetime. And we're going to say two years for the sake of training. And then your serve date, that's the date it was provided in person or by mail. And again, you chose choose your file, redacted. I'm doing the redacted final, mine's just a template. And then once you do this final section here for the final protective order, you will be prompted for a protective order privacy. This is a form that the uh, protected persons can fill out if they do want the protective order to be marked for public viewing at this point. It's only for the final order and it only shows select information. So back up where we have all the information for the for the um, protected party. If it is a minor, you can certainly enter them into the system, their date of birth it will not show on the public side. The public side is just going to show the fields like um, John Doe's name, not even his full date of birth, just the, the year of birth. 
and the county and court it's issued in. And it's very limited. You can read Senate Bill 325. It tells you exactly the fields that will be allowed. So no, no forms, no protective orders will be viewable on the public side. So we're going to go ahead and say, say yes here. And again, it's going to prompt you for, for um, the file. This is the form the protected person will fill out. And we're just going to pretend we have one here. This will go to OCA for them to verify and mark it public. And we're just saving this. Again, it's taken a little longer since we're in the test environment here. So that's on managing protective orders. You can view and edit. And I do want to show you something here in view really quick. We're just going to pick one here. So when viewing, you cannot edit anything, but you can see all the details that were entered, the respondent details. It's in the same order, protective person details, application details, experte, temporary experte, and the final order. You can also view the actual orders here by just clicking on that view. And there's your order. And we're going to go back to search results. So this next tab is a view screen as well. This is what law enforcement and district and county attorneys will have access to. So they will not have access to edit, um, add anything in here. That will be all up to the clerk. But this is the view side. So I want to show you again. We'll search for John Doe. We'll look for, actually, we'll search by victim this time. There's um, four search fields up here on the respondent information and then additional fields in this box when you expand it. So we're going to go ahead and search by Jeannie. Jeannie Doe and see the two here pull up. So as as more entered in here, it might be a little more hectic so you can narrow things down by the, the county of issuance, the cause number various details there. I would imagine a lot of it will be searched by cause number to make it easier. And then again, the view is similar to what I just showed on the other page. We'll just give this a second here to pull up. So again, this one's the magistrate's order for emergency protection. The title's right here at the top. And the respondent details, protected person details. And again, the attorneys and law enforcement will have the access to go ahead and view the order. We'll go ahead and close that. And that is it. That is all there is to adding a protective order, viewing and editing. Um, show you one more thing in edit. If it wants to pull up here. I was just going to delete. Here we go. We'll go ahead and edit an alias here. When you edit it, you do not edit it right in this box here. It opens it back up. So you edit it here. We'll say down. And then you'll need to save it, update. It changes it there. And then again, correcting any errors through here, like I showed you earlier. And then this one has the order, the consent for privacy. So this is just a notification reminding you that there's a, a notification out there for public viewing. And then we'll go ahead and delete it. 
Yes, we want to delete. So this is going to delete this whole protective order. Even once one expires, you do not want to delete it unless it's truly an error. Um, as they expire, they still will remain in the system. So that way law enforcement, if anyone needs to get in to see previous protective orders, they have access to that. And that is all the details for editing, adding, editing and viewing protective orders. Thank you very much for viewing this recording.